Nerd morning, everyone. My name is Jeremy. This is my brother, Joseph. Guys. He is an expert at 3D printing, does it professionally. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, and also, you are a hobbyist in the cosplay models and other type of yep. side as well. It's so fun. Yeah. It is. Um, uh, he's helped me with a lot of different prints, and so I thought I'd bring him on to talk about five ideas or five tips on how to do 3D printing successfully as a cosplayer, or particularly when you're getting into cosplay. Right, right. So I guess what is your first tip that you have uh, for people getting into the hobby? The number one thing, especially in the hobby side, is don't just go and buy a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollar printer and expect it to work like uh, an Epson printer where you hit print and zzz, you get your exact picture. Mm. 3D printers don't work exactly like that. Depending on the model you get, there are different types of tuning and leveling and calibrating and things to do in order to get the prints to really work the way you need them to for a cosplay piece. Yeah. So and and with yeah. that, like you don't need to be buying a five thousand dollar printer, particularly no. as you're getting started. There are good yeah. ones that you could be getting involved in and doing that at a price point of like two hundred and fifty dollars or maybe three hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, yeah. I, I got mine on sale for a hundred bucks. Yeah. So <laughs> So yeah. that's really is far more approachable oh, yeah. than I think people initially think now these are generally in rolls right is your is your material right um and how much is an average roll gonna cost 20 bucks on average okay yeah so i mean obviously those will add up the more and more you print right but really i mean if you're talking then with maybe a printer on sale and a roll of filament like you can be getting into this in less than 150 dollars oh yeah it's totally doable. So that's really good news, particularly for people on a budget. That yep. You don't have to be spending an incredible amount. Obviously, if you have the funds, like, go crazy. <laughs> but most of us in this world, you know, need to plan yeah, that start out. Start small. Bit. The second is kind of related. Don't spend a lot of money on files. You can go online and you can spend $100, $200 on files for an entire Iron Man suit, for instance. Yeah. Right? But... Odds are, if you go to websites like Thingiverse or Printables, then you can find most of those same types of files for free. Yeah. So, um, I, you've actually helped me print several different helmets that are mm -hmm. really cool and free. Like, this would maybe be an easy place to showcase what right? we mean of things you can actually get yeah. for free. So, this Iron Man helmet I got for free uh, by signing up for a newsletter. Uh, and it was actually the very first helmet I ever printed. I sent it to him. That's yeah. right. So it was the first one that I worked on myself. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. a little bit of a learning curve for me. Good, good experience to kind of figure yeah. out what are the good things and bad things to do with a print. And that's, you know, a learning process. And that was a really fun one for that. Um, yeah. Another one that was a free file that yeah. I got sent was a red hood helmet. Um, these are all wearable and that's really fun. And um, a third helmet to showcase that um, I found really, really fun to work on, an Arkham Knight helmet. And these are really fun and unique oh, yeah. pieces for cosplays that you can be using to help enhance your experience. Mm -hmm. And you can be doing other things, like I've seen people who create blades or they'll have armor pieces or you know decoration yeah prop yeah. weapons yeah 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 there's just countless ways i saw some people who made kind of like a a bendy style 3d print that they then like tape connected or something to be able to create like an armor that really moved oh, yeah. uh -huh. and like there's some things there that i'm like this gives you a unique cool look that you maybe wouldn't be very approachable to do in other ways, but are mm -hmm. very easy to do with a 3D right. printer. Especially since it's pretty easy to customize most of those pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, just by scaling the, the print, you can adjust for your own head or body size, you know, arm length. Just in the print software, you can adjust, make those types of adjustments. So, uh, hearkening back to, 
practice with your stuff. Don't expect to get it perfect first time. You might print it and realize, oh, that's way long for my arm or, or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you, know, you trial and error is going to be it's a an part important of it. thing. It is. Yeah. Number three, we have plan ahead. So especially when you want to make a finished part, you need to also be thinking uh, sizing, of course, but also what types of sanding and painting and finishing are you going to need to do to get this part to look the way you want it in the end. Major components for that are sanding, priming, and painting, and then any other finishing and detail work you might put into it. So you need to really plan ahead the whole process, what you want the end product to be. If you do that, it makes the, the journey a lot smoother rather than you get through to step five and realized if you had done this in step three, it might have been easier, right? Yeah. So, and, and there's some best practices of how to go about some of those things, the right type of sandpaper for that type of material and etc. This video really isn't going into all of those no. details. <laughs> Not the details. But, but. <laughs> um, but look into certain things. Um, when you're sanding, you probably should be wearing a mask. Right. Um, and, you know, protect yourself from the print dust. Uh, things like mm -hmm. that, that when you're going into those steps, look them up. There's tons of resources on that online. Oh, yeah. And But, you know, keep uh, that in mind. That way you're healthy and safe when you go through these activities. Tip number four is preparation is key to the polish. I, I alliterated that. Was that fun? That was nice. <laughs> I liked that. that was very nice. Yeah. Um, so really tied in close to that plan ahead. Uh, if you spend the time on your, your sanding and your priming, then it's way easier to get a really clean paint job at the end mm -hmm. and things just pop. Uh, if, you, if you take that time in the preparation stages, when you put down your final paint coat, it, it looks the way you want it rather than as you and I have both done, oh, that looks all right. And you go back and you sand it all off because you needed a little more uh, smoothing or filling or priming or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, an easy example of that is my um, Iron Man mask. The yeah. uh, If you look at this, it really isn't that bad, particularly like with no. the first print. The first one you ever did. Um, yeah, and, totally. But I mean, if you really, really look at that, you can see some lines there. And I mean, that can be just simply an aesthetic choice. And maybe you sure. intentionally try to do that. Right. That wasn't necessarily my intention <laughs> here, but I just didn't think that I had to sand as much as yeah. I really had to. And so I went there, I'm like, oh, this is looking perfect. Went to put in that, that the, the coats you of paint. paint and yeah. then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll put on more paint. <laughs> and that helps. It does help. But, but it does not <laughs> replace that prep work. Right. That makes a huge difference. It really does. I think like in contrast to that, some of the other ones that I've done later, where I spent extra time, right. sanded, worked on that, made a very clean finish look. Yeah, the Arkham Knight looks so much different. Like, yeah, night and day difference, so much better on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with this, you've got, you know, maybe some slight line stuff. Really, if you really, it's really look at it. It's pretty faint. But it, yeah. it, it really comes together. And that was very, very satisfying to have that finished look right. the way that I was imagining it to right. get. in your brain. And it actually gets there. Yes. And it, honestly, this is now like my third helmet that I got to really get to that point where I felt like I had that figured yeah. out. Yeah. So like you do a couple more of these and right. they're going to get better and better as you go along. That leading into tip number five, don't be afraid to fail, right? You're, you're going to have printer issues, you're going to have parts that don't look the way you wanted. All of these things, don't don't be discouraged because we all go through them where you hit those walls or things just fail or don't look right. Don't be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. Take it in. It's part of the experience. Learn from it and see what you can do better next time and you're just going to get better and better. And it really doesn't take too many of those cases to learn the ropes and be able to make some really nice things. Yeah. And so. I think with that, it's like kind of planning 
to fail as the plan for the print <laughs> is kind of a really good idea. And yeah. what I mean with that is like the first couple of prints that I did for myself that I got the file, does like made sure it was you know the proper way to do it to print on the machine set it up and go like doing the exact the entire thing is i did a little uh majora mask uh from from zelda and uh -huh. it was this big and i did something tiny because i was expecting me to be messing up and i'm like i'm not wanting to waste material yeah. and, but i'm wanting to tinker with this and try this and mm -hmm. i had a couple times that it did fail in fact and i learned yeah. and developed and so i wasn't jumping in with a giant mask or a you know a berserker style sword or right. something like that which would be amazing to do <laughs> but at first i needed to do some baby step stuff and yes. doing smaller prints are going to save them on material Gets you used to right, the, the, the software and that kind of stuff. Yep. And then you go in and you do your, your bigger print that you're right. wanting to do. Totally. Um, any other ad thoughts additional uh, to that? Just a bonus tip of just have fun. Yeah. Really, this is intended to be something fun, something where you play with it, you work on it, you make it right, you get it the way you want it to work. There's really no solid right way, wrong way. There's so much variation you can do with all of these things and the different prints and costume ideas and props. You can really dig into this and make it your own. So do it and have fun. You're obviously able to buy print designs as well as um, get ones for free. Oh, yeah. But you also can like dive into the world of designing yourself. Totally. Um, and obviously that's another whole level of skill <laughs> set that you develop for that. But if you're really wanting to get into this and make this a bigger part of your cosplay experience, that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. um, and like Joseph was saying, it's all about having fun, creating your cool costume and being able to enjoy the community. And, you know, if you're going to yes. do this, take this to a con, you know, you feel really good because you created something unique and interesting. Right. All of those things like just comes together to make a really fun experience. And that's what it's about is to having fun sharing the love of your character and in being able to enjoy the community that nerddom has to right. offer and there's so many facets and directions that to express yourself and to appreciate the stories that we love mm -hmm. and cosplay and 3d printing is becoming bigger and bigger in that space and it's just fun it's it's wonderful yeah <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a gaming channel where I do live game streams here on YouTube as well. That's called Nerd Morning Gaming. So check that channel out as well. Thank you guys so much again, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.